Welcome to Coming In Hot. We're actually uh, award-winning Coming In Hot. Sacktown Magazine, best of edition. Very proud of that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you live from Airplay Beats for the intro music. We are recording live from Darling New Media Studios in Midtown Sack. All right. So we're continuing with the Calling All Dreamers. Uh, contest. Um, I'm trying to get at least one person from each uh, contestant group on the podcast because, as you know, I'm a 2019 Calling All Dreamers winner with Nash and Proper. But today we are talking to Giovanni a Plantura, a contemporary Mexican bakery and plant store. What up, Giovanni? Hey, thanks for having me today. I'm very excited to chat with you. Yeah, I'm excited too because, you know, I've been here in the Plantura. As uh, you might know, I'm on the board, the selection board of uh, Calling All Dreamers. And um, it was a very interesting concept. But yeah. I, I, I want to start from the beginning. Um, where are you from? Are you from SAC? You know, and then... Um, like, how did Plantour come about? Give us a little bit of background. This is your show. This isn't a commercial. So let's just keep it real raw. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, where are you from? Let's start with that. So um, I was actually born in Mexico. Um, and my parents brought me to the States uh, when I was about three. Um, and so I, I grew up in San Diego. Um, at least that's what I tell people who don't know uh, very much about San Diego, because I actually grew up in Escondido, which is uh, North San Diego County. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and uh, I moved to Sacramento when I was uh, 20, 22, uh, 22 or 23. And I've been here for ever now. Yeah, I've been here for a <laughs> long, long time now. Yeah. So what, what part of SAC did you grow up in? You know, you moved here when you're three, but, you know, what part of SAC are you from? Um, so I'm, I'm not from Sacramento, I'm from San Diego. I grew up in Escondido. I'm from, oh, okay. uh, I, I, Sorry when I first that. moved uh, to Sacramento, though, mm -hmm. I moved into the uh, Green Haven pocket area. Okay. Um, and then I bounced over to Natomas. Um, and from Natomas, I moved to, um, where was I? I was downtown for a little bit. Um, and now I'm in Midtown. And I, I love Midtown. I love living in the grid. I love living in the grid. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's just, it's a really good combination or like feeling in the grid, you know, you've got this like big city vibe, but it's also just small enough where you can make a lot of friends really quickly. It's, uh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, Midtown is one of those places in SAC. You just go there, you could walk around, you exactly. know, you could just pop into buildings It kind of, you know, like a, a really, really small version of when you're walking through the city of San Francisco. I yeah. Believe. You know, yeah. with the, the different kinds of food, the different kinds of cultures, when you are walking through Midtown and just the, the vibe down there has just been, you know, it, it's been growing for probably the last 10 years. But I think yeah. they're just hitting their peak right now where, yeah. you know, you got farmers market, they're blocking stuff off for, you know, like uh, this Sacramento. And, you know, so um, really, really reminds me of when I was living in the city and just kind of walking around. And you turn down an alley and there's a, you know, uh, a street fair going on. You right. Know? So, you know, yeah, one of the things that the pandemic did, uh, you know, it forced everybody outside and I'm really loving the outdoor seating and mm -hmm. I hope that it stays um, for a while. I love what they did out in the uh, lowbrow area mm -hmm. um, and over next to a uh, beast and bounty too. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm really digging all of the outdoor dining that's going on. And the walkability of Midtown, like you're, you're right. It's just, it's, uh, it's so wonderful. I, I, I'm in Newton Booth, so I'm not sure how familiar you are with, uh, with Midtown, but it's, um, I'm about a block from, uh, Temple on S Street. Okay. Um, and also from the co-op. So if I need my groceries, I'll just, you know, walk on over there, get some coffee, and I'm good. Oh, you, you midtown out over there. <laughs> oh yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's get into Plantura. How did it come about? How did you meet your business partners? How are you trying to put this into a business plan? The pitch? Um, I, I, I believe you haven't, have you did the score yet? The score, um, pitch yet? No, that is coming up though. That'll be, um, happening the, I think it's the second week of November. Um, okay. so, I'm 
very nervous about that um Be because nervous. It's, yeah it's, it's tough <laughs> let me just yeah, tell you I, that right now this is it's a tough pitch yeah i was just talking to my friend about it and describing um what I what I understand about it, and it sounds uh, I'm very intimidated um, by it, but I know that the intention is to be um, helpful, you know, um, but it doesn't make it any less intimidating. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you were asking about Plantura um, and how Plantura kind of came about, and it's really it's evolved into um, into what it is now, but it started off as a um, uh, a mobile plant store concept. Um, and so uh, between uh, me and, and one of our business partners, um, and so we were selling plants um, and we were originally Plant Slut was our name. Plant and we slut. would, yeah, one word, <laughs> Plant okay. Slut. Okay, um, like Egg Slut. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, and, you know, it was, a, we, we, it was a lot of fun. It was very, the name was very tongue in cheek. Um, and we did a couple of markets, mostly with the big little marketplace that um, is over at uh, this 916 or was over at this 916. So I think they just wrapped up their mm -hmm. season, right? Um, so we had a few uh, shops with them and it worked out really nicely. Um, then the pandemic hit um, and I, have had been to Mexico City a few times before, but there was um, a moment where I left and I was there for about a month, um, right toward the tail end of the of everything. And um, I really just I fell in love with the with the city even more. It's it's got it's gritty, it's sophisticated, it's his it's got so much history and it's so modern. And so I fell in love with all of that and the pastries that I had there, you know, I grew up eating pan dulce, mm -hmm. um, like the conchas, the puerquitos. Are, have you had any of that stuff yes. yourself? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I grew up on Northgate, man. A lot of, a okay. lot of Mexican yeah. culture over there, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know, you know exactly what, what I'm talking about. And I, I mean, I love that stuff. Um, but the stuff that I was getting in Mexico City was not, um, was not like the stuff that I had grown up with here. It was, um, it was still a concha, but it was, uh, it was presented differently. And um, they were uh, just the, really some of the best conchas that I've ever had. And then the flavors that they were using too were really awesome. Like they had uh, the matcha green tea, which we now have a matcha green tea concha. Um, and they had uh, uh, activated charcoal conchas. Um, so that, I want I, I loved it so much because it reminded me so much of, of my childhood. Mm -hmm. um, but it was also just uh, you know presented in a, in, a, in a way that made it more contemporary. And I hadn't seen it ever. You know, growing up here, I had never seen anything like that. Never seen uh, my Mexican pastries uh, presented in a different way. Um, and so I wanted to bring it up here. So we partnered with um, with Al um, Al Toral. Um, who works, who does some work for um, Estelle's and he also uh, is uh, one of the chefs at um, Apple. Um, and he's, he and I have been friends for years um, and he was super supportive of Plant Slut. Um, and, you know, he had, he, he had, uh, had always come up to our pop-ups and stuff and I believed in his skill. Um, and so I had a conversation with him about what, um, what I was kind of, you know, imagining and we're both Mexican. Um, all three of us are Mexican. Mm -hmm. um, so we all, the three of us went down to Mexico City on a trip and we toured all of the, or a lot of the big uh, bakeries in Mexico City and even just some of the restaurants there too, mm -hmm. um, to really kind of get a, an idea um, for what we wanted to bring to Sacramento. Um, and we spent uh, maybe like four days there. We went to everywhere. We went to Rosetta, which was one of our favorites. Um, and uh, Pujol was on the list, but we didn't end up making it there. Um, I don't know if you see, uh, have you seen, um, is it Chef's Table on Netflix? Yeah. Okay. So I think it's in uh, season one. I don't remember what episode um, in season one it's on, but they, uh, they featured Pujol on there. Um, yeah. And so I had to go there and I, I, I've been there twice on other trips before, but um, I wanted to present Mexican food the way that they did here. You know, they're doing it so well um, down there and I haven't seen anything like that here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people just have this, uh, this 
image of, of, of Mexican food and a lot of it is very centered around uh, fiesta culture, which is wonderful. And, and it's a very real part of our, of our culture, but there's also so much more, so many other dimensions of Mexican culture that I wanted to, um, to highlight. Um, and so we went there and he, you know, he understood it, he got it, we came back, he came up, he came up with a few prototypes and, um, and, you know, we're, st he's still kind of experimenting with, uh, with new ways of, of presenting, uh, old classics mm -hmm. and it's, you know, people are responding to it. There, uh, there's a huge Latin American population in Sacramento. Um, and also like you kind of mentioned, you know, you grew up in Northgate, there's a, there's a big cultural presence, a big Mexican cultural presence um, in Sacramento and just in California in general. So these things are, are familiar and they'll remind you of, you know, growing up. Um, it's familiar to most people, um, but it's also just interesting because it's, it, it's not the way that you've had it before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, one, one thing, you know, like I've, I've just been listening to you. So who is this concept for because you're bringing this authentic authenticity from mexico city to sacramento but you don't want to pigeonhole people but you're going to mm -hmm. have to educate people at the same time so how are you going to navigate those waters and this just to tell you this is what you're going to hear in the score you know the score pitch so yeah. how are you going to educate people to come in and so they keep coming in because you could get somebody in there the first time it's about mm. those repeat customers how are you going to be educating a you know cecil a first time person in there that doesn't know anything about what you're talking about yeah um yeah th great question um i think what we're really it's more than just a bakery, right? So I think uh, the thing that's really going to pull you in is um, the vibe, the overall aesthetic of the of the concept that we've got. Um, our we've got a little very miniature version of what we want to do. Um, going with our uh, tra trailer, we have a mobile trailer. Mm -hmm. It's very lush. Um, we also offer our pastries um, out of the trailer. Um, and we've had the repeat customers come uh, come by now. We've got a really good group of loyal. Uh, customers that come to a lot of our pop-ups um, and we love seeing them. Um, I, I, there's, I guess one of the things, you know, to, to your credit, one of the things that surprised me um, was realizing that these Mexican pastries that I was so in love with and that I grew up with, I just kind of assumed that everybody knew what I was talking about when I said, this is a concha, you know? Um, and so I, in talking about it, developing the, the concept and, and, and just uh, communicating it to people, I had so many people never try one. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, a lot of the people that we've seen at these pop-ups that will be at Temple, will be at Pachamama um, and a few other places, they'll, uh, they'll come in because um, it looks interesting from the outside and then they try the pastries and hopefully that's what, what brings them back. Mm. Right. So um, so that's been working for us so far. And I'm really hoping that we're able to generalize that into a into a, a bigger retail space. OK, so one thing that I always ask people, why brick and mortar if the trailer is going so well? Yeah. Um, you know, and that is one of the things that we talked about too. Why do we want to do this? Because this, it, it is, it's going well. It's um, we're having a lot of fun with it, but uh, also just the the space that we've got doesn't allow us to fully realize the concept. Um, we want to be able to offer more than just pastries um, out of out of our location. Um, at some point, we want to have a bigger menu, and you know, this will be later on down the road that'll be one of our milestones that uh that we hit we'd love to offer some like brunch um lunch and some dinner items too um and that's just something that isn't really or i guess it's easy you can maybe do it with a you know out of a out of a food truck um but it's um i don't think you can really grasp the whole concept or the whole experience um out of a trailer Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's just going into four walls, a brick and mortar store where we're really able to um, articulate what we want you to experience in the store um, with the lush, the, the plants, the, the bakeries, the smells, the scents, uh, you know, everything um, is going to be we have more control over what goes on in the four walls than we do outside. <laughs> 
So you, you want to actually do all your baking, have the plants there, have, yeah. so all of this is going to be in one space. Yeah, you know, ideally, um, and one of the things that we talked about is maybe in the very beginning, um, we won't be doing the baking out of whatever space we're able to get because um, I, I fully realize that startup costs are so high. Uh, mm -hmm. especially for for bakeries and stuff right so one of the stuff that we one of the things that we talked about is maybe just having like a retail space and then um having our bakery somewhere else and then just transporting our baked stuff into the space but yeah they, they would all be coming out of the same place so you'd get you'd come to this uh to the cafe to the bakery um and you'd get uh your your baked goods um we'll have plants we want to have like a, a very curated um retail space that have products that are Mexican in one way or another. Um, and, you know, and Mexican American, really. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what, what have you learned from this experience with calling all dreamers? You know, um, is this your first business plan that you had to write? Uh, first financial structure that you had to draw out like how has it been you know like it because uh, offline before we got on you said that you and your partners all have jobs and then you guys are kind of doing this also which you know my first business plan that I ever done like I had a job also and you know I was work I was a chef so I was working 14 to 16 hours a day and then at night doing my business plan and working maybe or sleeping maybe two hours is but you guys got three people you know so are are you doing one thing your partner's doing another thing or are you guys kind of just collaborating on this whole business plan and the financials and how how are you guys breaking it up was this your first business plan ever um like let's just go there yeah. Um, so yes, it was, it's been my, it was my first business plan, um, way harder than I thought it would, uh, be. Um, I have a really great score mentor, um, Dipali. Uh, do you get to meet the score mentors being on the panel? Uh, no. Okay. Um, well, she's been, she's been wonderful. She's a huge, um, resource uh, of just information um and so she gave us like she gave us bullet points on things that she thought that uh we should include in the uh business plan and it ended up being really long and um <laughs> you know we do have uh we all have full-time jobs so there was also i had to you know um i think it could have been better if i didn't have another job that i had to work uh <laughs> that i had to work at um, but you know, I did what I could, um, with the information that I had and, um, not to even say that, you know, this is my first one. Cause I hate it when people do that. Um, I really, I gave it as much as I possibly could, um, with, with the stuff that I had. And I, I think I have a pretty good, um, an okay business plan. At least it was good enough to get me into the finals. <laughs> right? yeah, it was, and it, so now, you know, like I, I, I saw it, it was, it was one of the better ones. You know, yeah, um, I thank think you. that makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. For the, for the most part, like you yeah. had, you know, it was concise, it, you know, like you got your point across, um, everything matched up because, <laughs> you know, with the number part, like you just kind of start adding up stuff. And some people are just, I don't know if they're picking numbers out of the sky, but at least, add, yeah. you know, like or yeah, you know, and that, but, that part was the hardest yeah, part. It was, you know, it was the yes. hardest part. It is. At some point, I was like, "This is all very, very hypothetical," yep. you know. Um, but I also want to make it as realistic as possible because I'm, I'm such a planner. Like my friends tease me about my spreadsheets. Um, <laughs> I, I, that's you know, I die, I live and die by my calendar, and so I wanted to get in there and just make it as as realistic as possible. Um, but I just. Uh, I don't know. I, I, it was, it, it was taking a way longer than I, than I thought um, it would I actually was working two jobs when I started oh, wow. this, I quit one because of this. Yes. Um, so that I could invest more time in it. But by the time that I, um, by the time my last day at, uh, I had my last day, 
I had already submitted the business plan. I was just like, I wish that I had pulled that trigger earlier because then I would have had more time to invest into the business plan. Mm -hmm. Either way, I'm happy that it got me here. Um, but you know, it, about the division of work. Um, so I do mostly the paperwork uh, okay. stuff, right? So, um, and I, uh, I, I kind of spearhead a lot of um, the events and um, I, I manage it. Um, and so that's, that's kind of been my role. I'm the, I'm the paperwork guy. Okay. Um, and Al does, um, he's our pastry chef, right? And so not only is he our pastry chef, but he also runs our, um, our social media. Okay. Um, and so, um, and then, Al, and then, so it's Sal, Al and Giovanni and Sal does the plants. Okay. Um, and so he does all the plant stuff. He does the plant art. He does the, uh, um, he sources our, our, our retail for plants and stuff. Um, so the three of us kind of, that's how we divide our work. But the, what we're finding now is that the more that, um, the more events that we're doing, like this month, we're, we had a, an event every single weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, the more that we do, um, the harder it is to maintain those boundaries because um, because of our jobs, sometimes one of us is stretched out thinner than the other one. And so we kind of have to have this dynamic, uh, these dynamic roles where we we go in and start, um, and, you know, and maybe we'll help out with the plant stuff or we'll help out with the packaging or, or whatever it is. And so um, at some point here, right now, Al is the only one that's doing all of the, um, all of the baking, but mm -hmm. um, poor guy, I just, uh, he's been working to death because um, it, time is finite and our oven space is finite. Um, so it's been, I think it's been a lot of work on him. So we've got to, you know, figure out where, um, how we can support. And I think it's probably going to be that we're all going to have to start baking, you know, mm -hmm. um, which, which is one of the things that we kind of understood going into this. Um, and I want to know every part of my business and so exactly. does he, and so does, and so does Al, mm -hmm. um, and so does Sal. I mean, so all of us want to know, um, what how to run this and how to do that because if one of us is out you know because we're sick or whatever it is um mm -hmm. it, it, we can't stop so we all have to do we all have to do everything yeah and you know like you you're hitting the nail on the head right there Giovanni like you need to know yesterday how to make mm -hmm. everything like right. from from the get-go you guys gotta come up with a plan of a hey, you know Giovanni Al Sal Let's all get in the kitchen. Let's break down these recipes. Let's see how much they cost. Let's see how much those mm -hmm. margins are. Like you need to know that immediately, you know, yeah. and you know, from right now to, if you trying to win this thing, you got to tell Al, Sal, we working, you know, yeah. 20, 22 hours a day. Like we right. got to win this thing. We want to get that, that, uh, that, that money at the end. We want to have all those benefits at the end because right. you're going to go in front of these people and they're going to be like, okay, why don't you know this? Why don't you know, like I've, I've been through it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like these guys mm -hmm. are going to, they're going to be like, Oh, why, why is this guy the only baker? Why is this guy only doing the numbers? Like, why don't mm -hmm. you guys know, you know, because that was one thing with me. I was you, I was the paper guy. I was, you know, like running those numbers, but I had, you know, it was my recipes as well, but when they went to Jake and was like, all right, Jake, like how much does this cost? You know, I was the only one doing it. And that was one of those things where I had to let some things go and be like, all right, let's both sit down. Let's both know these numbers. Let's both know how much these recipes cost. Let's mm -hmm. see where we're sourcing these things from. Just so somebody, you know, anybody could ask your, your partners like, and they don't know. And what does that make the company look like at the, at right. the end of the day? So right. if you guys are all partners in this, just open up those books, be open right. and honest with them. If, if you feel like, you know, they should be doing a little bit more and have an operating agreement and stick to that operating agreement because your business plan is going to change. It's going to go up and down and up and down. But mm -hmm. if you have that operating agreement, if you, I don't know if you guys are all third owners, but if you guys are all equal, you guys should be doing equal work. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, um, you know, that, that needs to happen because you're going to, like you said, you're nervous about this score. I'm, I'm dropping jewels on you right now. It's hard I, as I'm, hell, but yeah, if I, everybody doesn't know everything, you guys are going to get flamed just like I did in that room. Yeah. Oh, you got flamed <laughs> and you survived. Oh, I got flamed. <laughs> like, 
I, I'm I, fully I, expecting to. You know, I walked the, out of that room with my tail between my legs. Yeah. Yeah. I went in there as confident as anybody. Yeah, I'm Nash and Proper. You guys know who this is, you know? Yeah. And they're like, no, we don't. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they, they, they described it as like, oh, they're, they're going to help you and they're going to look for those holes in your business plan. I was like, I already know that, that there are holes in the business plan. So, I, you know, now I'm trying to close up those holes as much as I can. But, um, you know, there's, there's still going to be some stuff that I know that they're probably going to come at. Uh, at us for it and you know I, with the with the whole roles thing um it's it's evolved into this but uh when we've started this like it was for me for me and sal since we were the uh, we started plant slut like it was just kind of a passion project we um he really loved plants and um and i was super supportive of it um and then even with the when with plantura it just kind of started as this fun kind of project and then all of a sudden um, it's starting to, you know, get more attention. And then we we submitted the application and I was like, eh, you know, um, we don't get it. It's fine. And then it yeah. happened. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just, I, it's been crazy how, how real it's becoming. Um, and, you know, we're very, we're both very humbled and terrified at the same and, time, you know, and, you know, just to big you up too, this was like the biggest pool of, uh, people, trying to get into the calling all dreamers con contest too. So you should pat yourself on the back for that because I saw the stack. There was a stack on the table, like wow. yay high, but then they had a stack behind them where they wow. were like, well, if we can't pick through these 25. We got about 50 more over here and oh there's more in the back. So you should, yeah. you should be uh. very proud of how far you've even gotten here. And, you know, like calling all dreamers, yes, it's a contest, but it's one of those things where your score mentor, even if you don't win, you know, like there's still the score mentor that you could pick their brain is me. There's everybody on the board. You know, you got Aaron Marchand over there. He could still help you out, find his faces. You know, yeah. Mallory at the city could still help you with, you know, trying to see where you could get permits and grants from, you know. So this being this far, you've already won. You know what I mean? So don't mm -hmm. ever beat yourself up just because if you don't make it all the way to the end, you've already won because you already got all these people on your side. And everybody yeah. knows what you guys are doing too. So don't, don't get discouraged about anything. You've yeah. made it to the top. Was it seven, you know, yeah. because there, it was that strong. It was really that strong where we had yeah. to be like, we can't even, you know, we have to put seven through because these guys work their asses off and they deserve it. Yeah. So um, I want to get back to the baker, the, the baked goods real quick. Where yeah. did these recipes come from? What kind of, uh, you know, like for somebody that doesn't know about Mexican pastries, you mm -hmm. know, like, um, like I said, I'm from Northgate, so I've been around them my whole life. Um, yeah. So somebody that doesn't know, like, what does it taste like the texture? Like, is there something like more American that you could kind of describe the, yeah. you know, how they are? So yeah, let's talk about the baked goods real quick and then we'll go to our next segment. Yeah. Um, so our staple, um, our uh, the 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 one that everybody comes to see us for is the concha, and mm -hmm. the concha is a sweet um, is a sweet uh, bread, um, and it has a topping that's um, almost kind of like a uh, very thin cookie um, yeah. on top of it, mm -hmm. um, and so the texture of of the ones that we make um, is like a brioche. Um, it's a very lightly sweet brioche. Um, and then the topping on top, it's a, it's a crackling topping. So um, it's got, uh, that, that's where most of the flavor comes from, um, except for our activated charcoal concha. So I, which is one of my favorites, uh, just aesthetically, I think it's gorgeous. It's this black, um, like circular kind of pastry. Um, and we infuse the dough with um, orange. So it's a, or you bite into it and it's an orange cocho with this uh, activated charcoal topping and it just looks beautiful. Um, and then we also have the matcha green tea, which is another uh, favorite. Um, and so the crackling on that one is uh, is a matcha green tea concha. So you've got this like green and this black uh, concha. Um, recently we came out with, um, for Halloween, we came out with a strawberry butella. Um, and so it's a, 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 nut, a Nutella, um, 
uh, stuffed uh, guanche uh, with a strawberry crackling topping. Um, and we've also got a pumpkin cheesecake one that's stuffed with a uh, pumpkin cheesecake. Um, and so that just takes it to a whole nother level. So those are, those are the ones that people really um, come in for. And those are the ones that sell out first at all of our pop-ups. Okay. We've also got a puerquito. I, well, we call it an ode to puerquito cookie because um, do you, are you familiar with the puerquito cookie? Or the puerquito pan. It's like it's That's it's, the, it's in the shape of a, it's a little thicker, but it has like that um that that pink topping. Is that that uh, one? So that's I think you're still thinking about the concha. Okay. It's, uh, and it's got yeah. So I think that's what you're kind of thinking about. Traditionally, they're like, like they're like a pink or a white or mm -hmm. like the chocolate. Yep. Um, and they've got like a. Uh, yeah, a, a like puffy kind of uh, topping on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the porquito, um, porquito literally means pig or piggy, mm -hmm. um, and so it's a it's a bread, it's a shortbread that's in the shape of a pig, um, okay. and traditionally it's made with lard. Um, and I I love the porquito cookies, um, but uh, Al um, had this really great idea to um, make it into more more of a cookie because uh, it's more of a bread traditionally. So we made it into more of a cookie and it's got molasses and um, spiced ginger in it. So we've got a lot of the uh, flavors that come in the traditional porquito cookie or porquito bread, um, but in cookie form. Um, and I, I feel like it just tastes like a really big uh, Teddy Graham, which I love. Um, so we've got those, we've got um, Garibaldi's, which is like a, a coconut pound cake um, rolled up into a ball. Mm -hmm. um, also one of my favorites. Um, what else have we had? We we got the choco flan. Have you ever had flan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So flan. Um, love flan. So Al makes uh this uh, choco flan. So it's basically like a, a chocolate cake on the bottom, and then um on top is a uh is a flan, um and he'll top it with uh seasonal fruits. Um. So yeah. Um. Does that kind of answer your question about the? Yeah, yeah what, no, what kind of sound, pastries we have sound, and, and how they're delicious. <laughs> yeah, how they're how, like what they compare to if you have not had a um, Mexican pastry, you know, and, and you know, and to, to that effect, I think um, this is also why we're super excited about it because we want to have these uh, really uh, great pastries um, and a lot of the bakeries in Sacramento. There's so many good ones. You know, I, I love going to Faria. Um, I love Ginger Elizabeth's uh, bakery and I, I've always been a really big fan of Estelle's too. And so we want to present something that is on, on par with all of these bakeries, mm -hmm. um, but with our take, you know, our heritage, um, our yeah. Mexican pastries, um, because a lot of these are, are European, right? And mm -hmm. there's also a whole Latin American um, bakery scene. Mm -hmm. no, that's yeah. awesome, man. And you're, you're separating yourself too. You're not going into what ginger elizabeth's doing what creams by right. kayla's doing like you guys are actually separating yourself from that pack and you're bringing in something that you know of course people are doing mexican pastries in sacramento but nobody's doing it with the plants and it's a very unique concept i really like it i like stuff that i haven't seen in sacramento and that's one thing that's how i started nash and proper i saw it coming up yeah. from la and i was like this hot chicken thing, I gotta get in the lab and right. make the recipe. Right. Because it's gonna hit sack. Yeah, and you know, we've been if seeing we're not this... the front, that if we're not the first, then everybody else is gonna do it. So right. Yeah. I don't know if it's like one of those things where um, you know, you you buy a car and then all of a sudden you see that kind of car everywhere on the street. <laughs> uh, you know. Um, but like with with this bakery, um, we we started it and now we're starting to see that a lot of this is popping up in the Bay Area where they're having these like contemporary Mexican pastries. Yep. Um, and so that's exciting to us uh, because it's, uh, you know, I, th I think people are really, it shows us that people are interested. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta catch it at the right time. And I think you guys are catching it at the right time. Um, so you, where are your pop-ups at this week? Are you doing any this week? Yes, we are. Um, so this week we'll be at RKS Salon on K Street. Um, mm -hmm. It's right next to the temple on K Street. Um, we'll be there from nine to 12. Okay. Um, and then the week following on Halloween day, we'll be at Pachamama in Isak. They've got a little Peruvian holiday 
Um, and so we'll be out there offering our treats and our plants and our plant art um, in their in their parking lot. They'll have live music and stuff. So um, come out to either one of those events. They'll be great. Yeah, Halloween, uh, October 31st at Pancha Mama. You're kind yeah. of breaking up, so I just wanted to clarify that. Oh, yes, um, yes, uh-huh. Yeah, so, uh, all right, our next segment here is our top five. You ready for some top fives? Hey, me? Yeah, yeah, you, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm ready for the top five, yeah. All right, man, let me get your top five bakeries you've ever been to. Oh, got it. Okay. Uh, anywhere, uh, like ever? Anywhere. This is your top okay. five. Okay, okay. So my top five... Um, Okay, one being like the best one. Um, I'd have to put Rosetta, uh, or I guess it's um, yeah, Rosetta in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Cafe uh, Nine or Nine. Um, it's also in Mexico City, and it's like part of the Rosetta family. Um, and then I'm really I I love Faria. I go there so much, so I've got to put them up there. Um, I also really like Ginger Elizabeth. I I, I visit them. I frequent them a lot too. And then I, I mean, Estelle's come on. So I think top five right there. There you go. That's a great top five. All right. Top five plants for first time plant parents. Okay. Number one, snake plant. That's what I tell everybody when they come in and say, I kill everything, get a snake plant. You're going to try, you're, you're going to have to try to kill it. You know, All you right. can, I, I don't know. I've, I've always had really good luck with them. Um, they're tough to kill. Uh, so snake plant for anybody who has a hard time with, uh, keeping plant plants I alive. Need. Yep. That's the plan I need. Um, okay. the peas. Yeah. That one, low light, low water. It'll be fine. Um, the other one that I really like, and I think this one might be a controversial choice is the peace lily. Um, because they, they're, they might be perceived as high maintenance, but I, I like them because they'll tell you when they need something. Like if mm -hmm. they need water, they're super dramatic and they'll, um, they'll just kind of wilt. But as soon as you put some water on them, they'll just perk right back up. <laughs> All um, right. So I feel like th those ones are pretty easy because they, they tell you exactly what they need when they need it. Um, the Monstera, I love Monsteras. They're beautiful and they're super hardy um, too. Pothos, of course, uh, uh, they're the long uh, hanging ones. Um, and I also really love a stag fern. I mean, a, a, a yeah, stag, a stag horn, stag horn fern, stag fern. Somebody correct me. Yeah. What, I forget the exact name. I'm not going to correct you. I don't know anything <laughs> about plants. Maybe one of your listeners will, will know <laughs> yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So top five. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. So we're at the, the section of this show. We're coming in hot. So this is anything that's on your mind, anything you want to talk about. It could be political, it could be religious, it could be funny. But Giovanni from Plantura, it is time to come in hot. What you got? Okay, anything on my mind. Um, honestly, the only thing that I've been thinking about is just getting this competition securing the bag <laughs> um being that finalist that's all that i really want right now and i think that um you know i i haven't seen anything like this in sacramento i've seen uh you know some of the i don't know they're all really great competitors they all really are really 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 great competitors um i just hoping that we're a little bit better <laughs> so that's becoming a knot <laughs> hey we'll definitely see um one thing i'm gonna tell you bring some of them pastries yes. to the school oh absolutely yeah. yes don't don't yeah. be cecil with a a, a board of pictures yeah no i'll bring we will bring in the actual pastry so you guys will try <laughs> yes how many are there of you guys how many no, people i don't know be... who's in the score i'm talking oh, about you score but for me okay. yes for it, you know, okay. for the final, for the final where I'm going to be at. Yes. I need some of those pastries too. All right. And, and bring me one of those snake plants and you might, you know, you might get through. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> hey man, go ahead and plug your, your website. If you got social, go ahead. This yeah. is your time. So our Instagram account is plantura spelled P L A N T U R A underscore sack and our website is plantura in sack.com 
All uh, right. So check out the website for all of the pop-up events that we're that we'll have and um, we'll continue to have. Well, thank you so much for coming in, playing tour, representing. Um, you know, you guys could come back anytime. I still want to talk to your uh, your partners. So if we got to do something a little bit later, I'm all good with that. Um, okay. You know, but thank you so much for coming through, man. I know you're a busy guy. Um, you know, but for doing this, you know, you're going to get a couple listeners and, you know, you're going to get a couple customers out of it. So, you know, thank you so much for coming through, man. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for reaching out. All right. This is Cecil from coming in hot. If you want those delicious mouth water and hot chicken sandwiches, www.nashandproper.com. You can holler at us at Nash and Proper at not Nash and Proper dot E-G. You can holler directly at me at Chef Cease or at Coming In Hot Podcast One. But um, please subscribe to wherever you get your podcast. Thank you. Peace. We love you.